All right, thank you, Scott Lee. Next up is Philip Van Cleve of Virginia Citizen Defense League. He is the president, and he is the reason why we are able to be here with guns and walk around and do everything we do. Well, uh, you know, it's you are the reason we're here. I don't do all this. You guys, you guys, you guys, you guys, you. What I do mean nothing. It's the sheer numbers that we have. Uh, and I um, actually, I want to um, I want to thank uh, the uh, leadership for, uh, for inviting me to speak at this. Um, we uh, we have a message to send to the General Assembly this year, and uh, that message uh, is that we do not want them to have three people out of that entire building full of 140 lawmakers kill gun bills. In fact, I don't care if it's anti-gun bills. It doesn't matter to DCL. We've been against this from the beginning in the House and in the Senate. Yeah, sometimes it benefits us in the House, but the whole thing is wrong. They need to let the bills go to full committees. And um, I mean, it doesn't bother me. The anti-gun bills are going to die in full committee. I've got no doubt about it. Send them up there. But give them a chance. I mean, we, we want a chance too. We don't want to be hypocrites about this. No problem. Uh, so we we want this fixed, and this is a message that um, we are hoping to send strongly to the General Assembly. When indeed the General Assembly, the Senate, the anti-gun, anti-freedom, anti-constitution leadership of the Senate decides that they're going to step forward, break the rules, their own rules, they're going to break them. Just because they want a handful of people to kill gun bills that they knew were going to pass. They knew the will of the people was they wanted all these gun bills to pass. There's no doubt about it. The will is there. You guys are there. How many were here for the uh, for the uh, second uh, for our uh, lobby day this year? All right. So we had over a thousand people. We flooded this courtyard. And believe me, that makes a difference. And that did make a difference. And what it did was it scared a few people in the Senate. And so we've got to find someone, even if we have to break the rules, because for them, the end justifies the means. We don't take that attitude. Trust the truth and doing things the right way is important. Why do you think we get concealed carry permits? Anybody here think we couldn't carry concealed without one? Why you got to do this? Come with a gun up. we don't do that because we play by the rules. We're the good guys. But the way is... So when the Senate decides that they're going to break the rules, and yet they want us to obey their rules, so that it doesn't, you know, now you're into hypocrisy. The will of the people is supposed to be here. And, and keep in mind that... Um, that, you know, what we're protecting is a constitutional right. We have a right to bear arms. Those that are trying to disarm us have no equivalent uh, mandate in the Constitution. So what we're, what we're, all we're doing is we're trying to get our rights back to where they should be in the first place. Over the last 60 years, they've been stolen from us. So even a little bit longer, gun control started as a way to control minorities after the Civil War. And that's, that's a, what kind of history is that? That, oh, we got people here wanting to keep pushing it. Yep, we need more gun control. And it's, uh, it, it's just unfathomable. And, and we need to make sure the General Assembly understands next year, no more death star committees. And like I say, that goes for the, as far as I can say, that goes for the House, too. Both sides need to clean up their act. Subcommittees are supposed to look at bills, work on them if they need work, recommend them, and then the full committee votes on them. That way, you have a reasonable amount of, 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 uh, of representation, and you don't have the kind of stuff going on in the Senate uh, that we, we had this year, uh, where, again, a handful of people killed the bill. That just wasn't right, especially after some of these bills are passed by huge majorities in, that, in the House. I need to get to the Senate and die. But we will not be deterred in our efforts to move forward. I see no reason to slow down. If anything, this only proves my resolve. I don't know about yours, but I, this only made me mad. And uh, we didn't deserve this. 
and we will try to fix it next year. No, it's not that we don't have things to celebrate. I'm not, a, I'm not a person who runs around constantly saying doom and gloom, although we're a reporter in Time Warner that seems to think I do. Uh, then it was a different one than the one I actually taped and then lied about what I said, but that's, uh, that's another matter we're still working on. But we, you know, we got the restaurant band repealed. And uh, that was huge. Thirteen years. And you know, and the press didn't give up for the very end. It's guns and bars, guns and bars. That's all I hear from the press. That is so disingenuous. Because it's not about bars. It's never been about drinking and carrying a gun. It's been about taking your family to a restaurant and going about your business and being able to do it concealed if you wish. But they've been pushing and hammering or trying. They tried everything they could to get the governor to back down from this. And he said publicly he'll sign it. And so I think that, that journey down that road is coming to an end, and we can worry about some other things. July 1, mark it on your calendars. As soon as the bill is signed, I'll be discussing celebrations that we're going to have on July 1 across the state. So, yeah, be it in Richmond or uh, be it in Tidewater, um, Roanoke, Williamsburg, we're, uh, we're planning on having some, uh, some, some, some partying going on. We're going to, uh, you know, have uh, some root beer <laughs> and, uh, and have dinner. Probably just, just you know, a series of those. We're going to be inviting key legislators to come speak at, uh, and attend at some of these, um, these dinners. And we certainly will be offering some thanks to a few people and we, we, we'll be sure to thank them. Um, one is Senator Hanger. He put in the restaurant ban repeal for VCDL. He got Delegate Gilbert. He put it in just because he wanted to put it in. You know, you can't be the legislator that does that. That didn't even make any, any voting. He just put it in because he thought it was the right thing to do. He was right, and it be, it's going to become law. So um, we have a we have, we have a lot to be thankful for, but that still doesn't knock down the fact that we lost a good 15 bills or more to something that was completely against the rules of the Senate. That just cannot be allowed to continue to stand. The lieutenant governor has taken a position on this. He, he basically looked at the, he agreed with VCDL in saying that they broke the rules. So hopefully next year uh, that won't be a problem. So we leave you with this. Um, this is a message from Virginia's gun owners to the uh, General Assembly and particularly to the anti-constitution, anti-freedom, anti-gun leadership of the Senate, which, you know, it may require that um, the, the ownership of the Senate is but that's what it's going to take to make them stop doing this at these committees. We're nonpartisan, but we're going to do what it takes to protect your rights. And, then, and it was up to them. Uh, they've, got, they've got a year to show us that they're listening. And if not, we're going to make a tsunami coming their way. Yeah. Yeah. And you'll, you'll have a chance to, to kind of give them a hint if there is a tsunami this year in the elections for the Congress. The world will be watching. So. Uh, with that, I'll leave you with, uh, with a little theme from Tom Petty that uh, I think is your message back to, to the anti-gun, anti-freedom leadership of the Senate. Thank you. Thank you.